we're in the midst of winter. It's February 1st here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Could be April 1st and April Fool's Day. And if it were, you would not believe, you'd say, April Fool's joke. Lee Pulliam is retiring from active racing. For me, when I started racing, it was just because, you know, hey, let's, let's all go have us a good time and, and uh, you know, let's do it and not, not literally control every aspect of our life. So I want to be able to put some focus back on my family. My little girl's growing up fast, and, you know, <clears throat> I've accomplished a lot of cool stuff in racing, and I don't really have anything else to prove on this level. And, um, you know, there's, believe it or not, there's more things in life out there too, and I want to make sure I don't miss out on that stuff. You know, I want to take care of my business, make sure that my customers are getting 100% because when we're focusing on me trying to run 50 races a year plus them, it takes away from their program too. So I just want to make sure that everybody running out of our shop gets all the detail and the focus that they can have on their car. Definitely learning all the time. Been at this quite a while, but uh, you know, somebody uh, like Lee, um, it's just a wealth of knowledge and uh, just try to pick up on a lot of stuff. Uh, he, he, um, he's a huge benefit and um, uh, been real helpful. Philip Morris is a perfect example. You know, he, he had to take some time away from racing, took two, two years away and come back stronger than ever when he came back. So sometimes in life, you got to hit the reset button and, uh, you know, just, just trying to take it all in right now and, and go have fun. Have there been a couple of things that you were surprised that you didn't know working with him? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, probably can't divulge him right here, but yeah, certainly he's, uh, you know, he definitely uh, knows all the tricks of the trade and, um, you know, he's uh, very knowledgeable and a great person to have to be able to bounce ideas off of. You know, he's obviously a very um, uh, tactical driver and uh, shows up at the end of these races and uh, no place is that a bigger deal than here at Myrtle, Myrtle Beach where you, uh, you really got to take care of the tires and, and be around at the end of the race. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's been a big, big help in that. What is your relationship now with Kiker Racing? Oh, it's just as good as ever, you know. That's we're still playing the race, whether it's once a month or whatever. Mr. Kiker has always been great to me, and uh, going to drive the Kiker number five machine every time we uh, every time we get a chance. So if we get a weekend where we've got uh, not a lot going on. Mr. Kiker wants to go race somewhere. That's where we're going to be. You know, before I hang up my helmet, 100%, uh, I'd like to have a chance to uh, tie Larry Phillips with five championships. You know, I think that would be really special for me and. Uh, I'm blessed to be here at four. I mean, just unbelievable if I never win another one. It's been a, been a great career. But I'd uh, love to get that number five in time and number six and beat him would be even better. So. With the announcement by Lee Pulliam that he is no longer actively going to race every week in short track racing, leaves the door open for a lot of the competitors who have raced against him to now have the opportunity to win and second, possibly achieve a national championship. With Pulliam in semi-retirement, it leaves the field wide open as to who will win here at Myrtle Beach in the icebreaker on February the 10th. What's interesting about that is how many guys are going after what Lee Pulliam has achieved here at the track.